Get your tinfoil hats ready because the little green men are coming your way. Cue the music. Hey, it's Manny Moonraker. This is UFO Report number 41. I am the hostess with the mostess. Wasn't it great having Big O back live on Sunday to chat with you guys? First of all, I want to apologize to those of you who I know that by now have sent me a message saying you didn't tell us it was going to be live. It was actually like a spur of the moment thing. So that's what happened. But I got it on the books, it's recorded, you have the evidence. I think it's a great idea that we might just be able to set up some meetups with Big O as he travels cross country. We're going to set that up on UBR Troop Seekers as well as further investigate the idea of playing UFO specific documentaries and films through the UFO Troop Seeker group page so that we can all get together and chat about what we're looking at. Of course, all the credit for that idea goes to Jeff. Jeff the science guy, thank you. That was fantastic. I actually ran a test of this Saturday night because I've got nothing better to do. So I started fiddling with it, and there you go. We came pretty close to making it happen, making it work. So a little bit more testing to be done. But before the end of the month, we're going to have our first little video group chat together, get together thing. And, uh, and still my, my goal, folks, is to, to do this live, to do the podcast live, or to at least have video. We'll get there one way or another. So today is the eclipse. I'm actually recording this particular episode on Sunday. Because I want to make sure that you guys get at least a shot of UFO Buster Radio in your ear. Before you go out and stand in front of trucks, as Big O says. Or before you get that retinal burn. I want to make sure you can find the podcast. Whatever the case may be. This story is fascinating. And it happened back in 1955 on this very day, August 21st. And you're going to love it, because it is one of those stories that even though people have come out of the woodwork to find a regular old normal explanation for it, there is one bit of information that you really don't hear about this. But the story itself was brought to my attention by the uh, Sicilian Italian mob, so I figure, you know, I, I need to bring it, I need to bring it to the show. Or it might just disappear all of a sudden. So the incident I'm talking about happened August 21st, 1955. And it is known as the Kelly Hopkinsville Encounter. On the evening of uh, August 21st, 55, five adults and seven children. I and mean, then people know how to get busy over there. Apparently arrived at the uh, Hopkinsville Police Station claiming that Small alien creatures from a spaceship were attacking their farmhouse and they had been holding them off with gunfire for nearly four flipping hours. The article that I have here actually breaks down, I guess, the uh, the people that were engaged in the situation. Two of the adults were Elmer Sutton and Billy Ray Taylor. And they're the ones who claimed they had been shooting at 12 to 15 short, dark figures who repeatedly popped up at the doorway or peered into the windows. What the hell is going on? So the residents that were in the farmhouse also included uh, Glenny Langford, her children Lonnie, Charlton, and Mary. And also she had uh, two sons from a previous marriage. Elmer, John, and their and their wives, Vera, 
Aileen. And also Aileen had her brother O.P. and uh, the other brother, Billy Ray. And his wife, June. Holy cow. What the, all these damn people in one farmhouse. What the hell was going on there? So apparently they were shooting at these little alien thingies, right? So, and a lot of people say that this uh, particular story is associated with the idea of little green men. Because of the way that they uh, described these alien creatures. Many people say the description also fits the idea of a... Uh, of something that looks like a, a goblin, like a small goblin, except there was a shitload of them attacking this farmhouse for some reason or another. These people attracted some some crazy mess. What's fascinating about this story is that a pair of psychologists, Rodney Schmoltz and Scott Leinenfeld, actually cited this particular case inside of a psychology book. The section for the psychology book was called Pseudoscience and a study of extraordinary claims. According to them, a review of this incident was helpful in bringing psychology students to the point where they could use some critical thinking. What you're going to love is what they assumed happened during this attack. According to them, the Hopskinville entities really have an earthly explanation. According to the psychologist, the aliens were in fact great horned owls and that the eyewitnesses were probably intoxicated during the alien attack. So every single person in the household was drunk off their ass and basically shooting at owls that were peeking into their windows. Who writes this shit? I mean, how did these guys get to put together a freaking psychology book to teach the future of America. This is ridiculous. But they're not the only ones who try to screw the pooch on this one. The Committee for Skeptical Inquiry members and skeptic Joe Nickel noted the family could have mistaken and misidentified, totally screwed up what the hell they were shooting at. Because more than likely these were eagle owls or the great horned owls. Because they are nocturnal, fly silently, and have yellow eyes and aggressively defend their nests. Apparently these people that lived in their very own farmhouse had no idea that there was a goddamn nest, freaking horned eagle owls. How does that make sense either? Wouldn't they know? Wouldn't they have seen these eagles, these, uh, these horned owls before? Again, it makes no sense. Also, a nickel stated that that night there was also a meteor sighting that occurred around the time that uh, Billy Ray claimed he saw a bright light streak across the sky and disappear beyond the tree line in some distance from the house. So what we have, according to the skeptics, is that we had a meteor shower. A meteor came down maybe a half mile away from the house. It pissed off a bunch of horned eagles, uh, eagle owls, uh, they got freaking mad as hell and decided to, you know, harass the shit out of a bunch of drunk people in a farmhouse. None of that really meshes for me as far as an explanation. It almost seems like these two folks, you know, the psychologist team and this guy from the skeptic committee, they kind of jumped on each other's bandwagon and, um, I mean, they did their own kind of rubber dicking on this one. Now, another thing that uh, you will see when you look at this particular incident is that some ufologists compared the alleged creatures to gremlins. Because that's what they look like. They look like gremlins. It, it looks like, you know, the mugwai, you know, the uh, stripe. The, the worst of all the gremlins. And maybe they were. Maybe they were intoxicated. Maybe they were sitting around uh, high and off each other's farts and decided, to, you know, they were starting to see things. They shared in the experience. But many people refer to this incident as the Hopkinsville Goblins. And it's become kind of like a popular cultural thing. A uh, ufologist, Alan Hendry, wrote at one point that the case is distinguished by its duration and also that the number of witnesses involved and uh, that the uh, Project Blue Book actually listed the case as a hoax 
with no additional comments. Apparently, the uh, the actual sighting, the story of the sighting, is uh, become a narrative for the tradition, having to deal with flashing lights appearing in rural areas, and uh, the sightings of little green men. Now, while this is not the origin of the term little green men, people associate this particular incident with little green men, or cop goblins, ugly ass eagles. Ugly ass owls, whatever it is, you make the call. Now what's fascinating about this is that even though these entities, these folks, you know, the ufologist, Project Blue Book, the psychologist, even though they're all saying it was probably owls, everybody was high as shit, and that's the reason for what happened, apparently, a few weeks before, a similar incident occurred in the Ohio Rivera area, and that also had several witnesses to it. As a matter of fact, there were dozens of eyewitnesses, so there is a lot going on here. You can't really dismiss this as it being horned owls that look like they're possessed with glowing yellow eyes. But I gotta say this. This story, in reading what happened in Hop- this story, the Kelly Hopkinsville encounter, when I'm reading this, this reminds me of a part of the Ronnie Dawson story, where Ronnie Dawson actually made statements that there was something very similar to these Hopkinsville's goblins, alien thingies, that actually was harassing him on the evening of his sighting. Are we all really just on drugs or whacked out on beer? Listen, I've had my uh, my time with alcohol. I've never seen a goblin or an alien. And I don't see how you can say that an entire family actually mistook an owl, a bird, for something that was not familiar to them and was actually peeking in through the window. I'm sorry, I don't think that these owls are that tall to where they can peek into a window, but... What's fascinating also about the story is that neighbors of the family told the police that the next day at 3 o'clock in the morning, apparently the family was up in arms because the entities returned again about 3.30 in the morning and the family decided to pack up and leave. So there, I, I mean... Were they drunk the next day too? I don't know. It seems like we are trying to rubber dick these people instead of really getting to what the hell was going on. So like I said earlier, today is the eclipse. People, be careful. Have a good time. Enjoy this eclipse situation. It is fantastic. I know I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to get some photos. We'll do our best. If you get anything and you want to share with us, dump it into the UBR Truth Seekers group page on Facebook. And share it with your friends. And like Big O said in yesterday's episode, for some of us, it is a a a once-in-a-lifetime type situation, so you don't want to miss it. I know I won't. Thanks again for listening. Let's be careful out there. Ciao.